Brother Busby, I'm looking forward to hearing you preach tonight. Been looking forward to this for a month now. I want you to come on up here, greet this congregation, just preach, 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 and take your liberty and have fun. Praise God. They're good people. They'll preach with you if you'll preach to them. Go for it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many Jesus, love the Jesus, Lord Jesus. right now? Amen. Hallelujah. How many love the Word of God? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can we let Sister Busby sing? You want, can you come sing? Praise God. All right. I have just enjoyed being here so much this morning, hearing Brother Dunn preach. First time to hear him preach, and he said some wonderful things. I like the part he was talking about how that God is jealous. And, uh, you know, when we understand that there is only one true God, and, and he gives us revelation of who he is, then can you imagine how angry it makes the Lord when we, when we have idols and we have false gods and we do not give God all the praise that's due to his name. So this morning he was preaching. I just kind of got lost in my own world and taking notes and, and uh, listening to him. It's very, very good preaching. Praise the Lord. Is everybody happy? All right, all right. I want Sister Busby to get ready to sing. She preaches to me, and uh, uh, she uh, she loves the Lord. She's a woman that loves music, and uh, she is a great singer. And I want her to. I want to. I want to know. Are you going to worship with her? Praise the Lord. All right. Brother Busby puts me on the spot every once in a while. Okay, I've done something. Okay. Ain't God good? God is good. We live in a world that's rocking and shaking, and we don't know what's going to happen next, but God is good. Amen. He's been good. He's been faithful to me. He's been faithful to me. 52 years, God has been faithful to me. This pedal's not right, but it, that's okay. If you know this... Would you sing it with me? Because I'm living in a world that don't know who Jesus is anymore. I'm living in a world that's not sure that there is even a God. But I know him. And I know how great, how awesome, how powerful, and how much he loves us. And that's the most awesome thing about it is that he does love us. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. The darkness tries to hide, trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. 
Would you stand up? Age to age he stands. Oh, and time is in his hands. Beginning and the end. Beginning and the end. The Lord, my God, is one. Yes, he's the only one. The lion and the lamb. Lion and the lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Age to age, he stands. Oh, and time is in his hand, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Lord, our God, is one. Yes, he's the only one. The lion and the lamb, lion and the lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. It's up to you, David. Just preach. Praise God. I'm going to read from the 11th chapter of Hebrews in the New Testament. Scripture that is familiar to everybody here tonight, I'm sure. And um, But we want to look at it again. I don't preach anything new. I don't preach anything that nobody's ever preached before. Well, I don't know. Maybe I do, but I don't want to. But I just, I just want us to look at the Word of God again here tonight. Hebrews 11. And let's read the whole 11th chapter. No, we won't do that. We'll just read. Um, let's read verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. How many are interested in pleasing God? Do you want your life to please God? He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How many remember when you sought the Lord with all your heart? You prayed, you repented of your sins. You remember that? Praise God. If you don't remember it, you might need to do it again. How many remember when you got the Holy Ghost? All right, all right. And you got the Holy Ghost as a reward. The Holy Ghost is a gift. And it is the reward of them that diligently seek after the Lord. Praise God. Let's ask the Lord to help us. Let's pray right now, everybody. Come on, loud, out loud. Let's pray. Jesus, would you help us tonight to receive your word? Come on, I'd like to hear you. Pray louder. Jesus. We want to receive from the word of God tonight. Hallelujah. Open our hearts. Open our hearts to receive the word of God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Everybody say faith. All right, you may be seated. He says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Now, this, this is talking about salvation, receiving salvation. If you study this pleasing God here, it has the same meaning as when Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, and God was pleased with Abel's sacrifice. Pleasing him. To please God. We're living in a generation that's not worried about pleasing God. And they're not pleasing to God. But even in this sin-cursed generation, we need to please God with our worship and with our praise. Without faith. Without it. Now, it's, uh, it's almost 7 o'clock. I don't see any reason why we can't get out of here by 10, 30, 11 tonight. Amen. Now that I have your attention, let me preach to you a little bit. No, I'm not long-winded. I never have been accused of being long-winded. Without faith, there's some things that we can't live without. We can do without a lot of things. We get, we get spoiled by things that we think that we can't live without and find out, yes, we can live without some things. But you cannot be without faith because without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek after him. Faith is the handle by which we take hold of God. If you want God in your life, you have to reach out to him in faith. It is faith that gets the job done with the Lord. It is faith that brings God into your heart, into your life, because you receive him by faith. Have you, ever, have you ever seen someone come to the altar and seek the Lord for the Holy Ghost and not receive it? Have you ever seen that? There are two reasons why people don't get the Holy Ghost. One is if they're not totally repented of sin. The Lord will not fill anybody with the Holy Ghost if they have not repented of their sins. There's a difference in repenting and regret. Some people are just sorry that they got caught. They're not sorry for what they've done. They're sorry they got caught. But repentance is a gift of God, and people must repent. Now, the only other thing that keeps people from receiving the Holy Ghost is the lack of faith. Faith has to be in a level for you to receive anything from God. Before you can receive healing, miracle, salvation, your faith must rise to a level that causes you to receive what you want from the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Just give me a good nod once in a while. Good old, good, good old nod so I'll know I'm on the right track. It is completely necessary that each of us develop a correct concept of who and what God is. Your faith will be connected to your concept. Whatever you see God to be, whatever you believe God to be, will, that's the kind of faith that you're going to have. If you have a big concept of God, then you're going to develop big faith in God. And there are, there are, there are things that come against our faith there are things that cause us uh, not to, to release faith and, and for our faith to be thwarted. Or I, was, I was 
preaching to a man or I was teaching him a Bible study. He said, I don't have any faith at all. Praise God. Folks, I'll do a little bit better if you'll, if you'll just let me know you're out there. Once in a while, I'll do better. Amen. And, so, and so he said, I, I don't have any faith at all. I said, then you need to really listen to what I'm saying right now because faith comes by hearing the word of the Lord. All right. We hear a lot of things. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit upset. I've got this, I've got this vehicle and I like XM radio, and I've got an XM radio in there, but it's not working. Uh, and, and I like my XM radio. I like news, and I like to listen to some certain uh, programs on there. But we hear a lot of things. We hear, we hear all kinds of things that come through the sound waves and relatives and neighbors, our acquaintances tell us a lot of things. A lot of them are not good. But nothing can help you like the word of God. When you hear the word of the Lord, faith can be generated in your heart. God is the living God. He speaks to us by his living word. The Bible is the living word. How many love your Bibles? Amen. How many thank God for his word? Let's praise him right now. Let's thank him for his word. Hallelujah. 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 It is the word of God that delivers us from, from the bondage of the world. It is the word of God that speaks to us. Living God speaks by his living word. Nothing else can do that for you. Television can't do that for you. The internet can't do it for you. Encyclopedia can't do it for you. All the works of mankind cannot do it for you. But the word of God can do something in your heart and in your mind and in your soul if you will allow it to come in. Day of Pentecost. Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost. And what did it say? And some mocked him. God can't help mockers. But others received the word with readiness of heart. And when we receive that word, then something begins to happen in our soul. Now, I have, I have hearing aids. I, I wear them sometimes when I really want to hear. I wear my hearing aids. And uh, they sold me these, and now I, I paid a lot of money for these, and I went to the people uh, the other day to see if they'd work on them a little bit, and they said, well, you need new ones. I said, what, what do you mean? They said, well, these are, these are four generations back. What you got now, they, you're four generations behind on hearing aids. I said, my goodness, now they got them now that, that hook up with your cell phone and they, and they work with your cell phone and you, and you can, it's just, I don't know you, but what I'm trying to tell you is that they, they were telling me how my ears work and sound waves come into the ear and it's, it's a tremendous thing. And, and there's three little bones inside there. There's an eardrum and three little bones in there. And when the sound waves come to the drum, it taps out a message to your brain, and you hear. Now, there's a whole lot more to it than just that. But what I'm trying to tell you is that when you hear the word of God, something happens more than what happens any other time. Anything else you hear will not do. Something happens more than just little bones clicking. Something happens in the soul. Something. Something happens in the spirit. Faith comes by hearing the word of the Lord. I feel faith rising here tonight. I feel faith growing here tonight in somebody's heart. That, that, that you must have this concept of God that I'm talking about. Because there's all kind of enemies against you having this concept of God. 
The devil certainly doesn't want you to hear the word of the Lord. The devil will do anything he can to stop you from hearing the word of the Lord. I've written a Bible study. It's doing good, but I'm going to tell you that the devil fights that Bible study. He doesn't want people to hear the plan of salvation because he knows that it will set them free. We may forget how powerful the Bible is, but the devil will never forget. We may forget how powerful prayer is, but the devil will never forget. We may forget how powerful faith is, but Satan will never forget. That's why he wants to steal the word of God out of our hearts. Let's praise the Lord a little bit right now. Your concept of God. Your idea of who and what God is is so very important. Some people think that God is Santa Claus or a genie in a magic lamp. You just tell him what you want and he'll fulfill all your wishes. There's a little more to God than that. Some people think that God is, is like some fairy tale. or some, some people have a weird concept about God. All kinds, of, all kinds of ideas. America has become a godless society. The atheist says there is no God. The, the agnostic says if there is a God, he is not concerned with humanity. Can you imagine? The word of God tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. How could God not be concerned about us? Anybody doesn't think that God is concerned, all they got to do is look, is look at the nail prints in the hands of Jesus Christ. He's very concerned about us. One, one little kid in Sunday school said, I asked Jesus, how much do you love me? And he stretched his hands out like this. And then he died. That's how much he loves us. I don't care who told you God don't love you. He loves you. I don't care who told you that, that, that uh, the church here doesn't love you. This church loves you. This man of God here loves you. How many appreciate you, Pastor? Praise God. Praise God. Concept. It's all in our concept. And you see, there are things that try to tear down the idea of God. Isaiah said he saw the Lord. He said, he said in Isaiah 6, he said, I, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. I don't care what the world says about it. God is high and lifted up. I came here tonight to lift him up because he deserves our worship because he is high and lifted up. Let's praise him right now. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Are you praying for me, sister? This is hard work. I'm telling you, it may look easy. I may look cool, but I'm sweating, okay? Pray for me right now. And so, and so we got to understand that we're living in a world with an enemy of our soul that wants to destroy our faith. I refuse to let the devil do my thinking for me. I refuse to let the world uh, define me. I have faith in God. I know what God can do. Can I get a witness up in here tonight? I know what God can do. God can deliver people from sin. God can deliver them from alcoholism. God can... Can I get a witness up here tonight? Anybody been saved by the power of the Holy Ghost? Praise God. Concept of God. Concept of God. Would you believe the fastest growing religion in America is Muslim? I wish I could say the fastest growing religion is one that's apostolic, but it's not. But it doesn't, truth is not in trouble. It doesn't matter what comes against truth. Truth is going to win in the end. Yes, right. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. well, people, people's got all these concepts about God. You got pantheism that believes that everything's a God. Humanism says that you and I are already gods. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. If I'm a God, I'm disappointed in God, Godhood. Amen. We are not gods. We are not, we are not, you know, we're not. You know, we're not just sitting here. Uh, we're we're not humanists. We're not we're not um, uh, tree huggers. Or there's no urge in me to just run outside and hug a tree or anything like that. 
there is, there is a conviction in my heart that I need to worship Almighty God, Hallelujah. creator of heaven and earth. I'm talking to you tonight about your concept of who and what God is. God is good. I said God is good. There's been a lot of people trying to give God a bad name. I'm here to set the record straight. God is good. We don't, we don't pray to make God good. God is good whether we ever pray or not. He, he is good by his nature. I'm talking tonight about your concept of God so that you can build faith in God. God doesn't want to destroy you. God is really in your corner working for you. The devil wants to steal that idea out of your mind. Do you know that the Lord, we do, you do believe that God made man from the dust of the earth. You do believe that, don't you? Well, I want you, I want you to know that there is an uprising, there's a surge in America of, of evolution. I'm, I'm old enough that when I was a kid, I remember, I remember, um, the uh, the civil, civil rights movement and all that it, and the teaching of evolution was all involved in, in that and that was one of the main that was one of the main vehicles uh, that it was one of the main things that was was uh, in, involved in, in the '60s and the '70s that 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 man evolved from animals. Man is not an animal. Man didn't come from animals. Man was made in the image and the likeness of Almighty God. Amen. The Bible tells us in Romans 1 and 20 that the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Let's look at it closer. Invisible things of God are clearly seen being understood by things that are made. Now, the last time I came through here and went all the way to uh, the Redwood Forest in California. And you stand out there in the Redwood Forest and look up just as far as you can see up there. And those trees are big and tall. I don't know about you, but that testifies to me that there is a God. Amen. God made those trees. Man can't make a tree. Man can make a tree, but he can't make it grow. He can't make it live. He can't make it sprout roots. It's artificial. But, but we see something in a redwood tree that tells us there is a God. The mountains around, right here in this area. The grandeur of, all of that testifies, the Bible said, that the whole earth is full of God's glory. You can't, you can't see love. What color is love? How much does it weigh? But we understand something about love when we see a mother with a newborn baby in her arms. Invisible things, clearly seen, being understood by things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Who is without excuse? Charles Darwin is without excuse. The evolutionist is without excuse. The atheist is without excuse. The humanist, is, come on, you're gonna help me just a little bit right now. There is no excuse for not giving God glory. He is the great creator of heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. Huh. I'm talking to you about your concept, your mental idea of who God is, what God is. 
God is not some mythological creature with a baseball bat waiting for you to get in position so he can beat your brains out. That's not what God is. God is love. God doesn't just have some love. He is love. God don't just have a little bit of grace. He is grace. God's not going to run out of business. He's not going to run out of mercy. You haven't gone so far that God doesn't love you. You haven't been so mean that God doesn't care about you. But God is good all the time. And God wants to be good to you if you'll let him. If you'll let him, he'll, he'll save you. If you'll let him, he will bless you if you'll let him. How many want God to touch you and touch your life right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith, faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe what? He must believe what? That he is. One young person, I was teaching on this one time, this young person said, everybody believes in God. Do you, do you realize that America is becoming more and more barbaric, more and more heathenistic? That while, I, while we're in this building enjoying the presence of God, there are people that are worshiping cats and dogs and ticks and fleas and, and bowing to everything, sun god, moon god, star god, all kind of stuff. Uh -huh. Worshiping, false worship. But you are blessed tonight. God has, God has, God has blessed you tonight to hear the truth of God's word. To know that there is one true God, and his name is Jesus. Jesus is Almighty God. Jesus is not a junior God or a lesser God. Jesus is Almighty God. Jesus is the God that in the beginning said, let there be light. And that, that was Jesus. Uh, now, I know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and I know that he was uh, walked the earth for 33 and a half years and died on the cross uh, and rose again. But I'm telling you that Jesus is the only God you will ever see. When you get to heaven and you look for God, you'll find Jesus because Jesus is Almighty God. And I want you to have faith in him tonight. Faith in his ability to save you. Now, I'm not going to preach all night. But I'm going to preach a few more minutes. He said, without faith it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. That he exists. God wants you to believe in his existence. You say, well, preacher, everybody believes in his existence. No, everybody don't. Not only does God want you to believe in his existence, but he wants you to believe that he exists to be your savior. That he is there, ready, waiting. Now, Faith, faith, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligence. There is more to being saved than shaking a preacher's hand or signing a card or putting a bumper sticker on your car. There's more to salvation than simply mentally accepting that Jesus Christ is real. There is a faith, a saving faith that drives a man to seek the Lord with all of his heart. Look at the verse again. Without faith, impossible to please. He that cometh to God must believe that he is the rewarder of them that diligently, diligently 
seek him. Being saved is work. I know salvation's free, but it costs you everything. Faith, under the, you're under the sound of my voice tonight, and because I'm preaching truth, faith will take a hold of your heart if you'll let it. And it will bring you into a spiritual experience with God. Faith. When that kind of faith gets a hold of your heart, you will diligently seek after the Lord. How many want to be saved? Would you let faith touch you tonight? Faith that will cause you. I'm not talking. I've had people tell me, well, preacher, I can't. I, I don't want the Holy Ghost because my, my great grandmother was a certain kind of religion. My grandmother, my mother, my father, we've always been this religion. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when faith touches you, that causes you to forsake tradition, push that out of your way, push, push all these other things out of your mind and out of your way and seek the Lord with all your heart. Then you will find him in the power of the Holy Ghost. Faith will bring you a miracle. Faith will bring you deliverance in the Holy Ghost. He said the kingdom of heaven, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take the kingdom by force. God wants you to push your way in to the kingdom of God. He wants you to forsake everything else. He wants you to take the kingdom of God. There is a faith that will cause you to take the kingdom of God by force. All right. And when that faith begins to generate in your soul, you're on your way to salvation. You're on your way to getting what you need from God through faith. Somebody said, told me, said, well, we're saved by grace. We are. We're saved by grace through faith. Right. What is your concept of God to you know, I think I'm talking to people tonight that you you don't want you don't want it easy anyway. You don't want some you don't want some half baked idea of being saved. You want true salvation. You want a genuine experience with Almighty God. Yes. And you're not going to be sold short with saying the sinner's prayer or making a decision or shaking a preacher's hand or joining a church. No. You must be born again of water and the Spirit. Except a man. St. John 3, except a man is born again of the water and the Spirit. Would you stand with me right now all over the house? I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody here tonight that needs the Holy Ghost. If you want the Holy Ghost, you can receive the Holy Ghost here tonight. If you need a miracle, you can receive a miracle right here tonight. Faith begins to build and grow in your heart. Faith begins to generate in your heart here tonight. The Word of God brings faith, builds faith in your mind and your spirit. Praise God. Would you pray with me right now? Would you pray with me right now? Lord Jesus, we thank you for your Word. We thank you, God, for salvation. We thank you for these great people that are here tonight, Lord, that wants to be saved. Oh, God, there's nobody here tonight that doesn't want to be saved. Lord, we're praying right now that conviction of the heart would touch them and that faith would begin to grow in their minds. Faith in the Son of God who can set them free. I wonder tonight, would somebody like to come? You'd like to come down here and you'd like to repent and you'd like to pray. 
and you would want you would want the ministry to pray with you tonight. Is there anybody here that wants the Holy Ghost? You want a touch of God in your life? Would you come? I wonder. Would you come? Would we all come around the front here? Would you? Would you move out from where you are? Maybe. Maybe you would move out and come down here. Everybody, whether you have the Holy Ghost or don't have it, would you come?